Opposites Distract. I thought that was a really interesting, catchy title, and that's why I put it out there, because there's a nice little play on the word that we've all heard before, you know, opposites attract. And have you ever asked yourself, really, do opposites attract? And if they do, how long does that attraction last? How healthy is the relationship that flows out of that attraction? And what happens if you're not an opposite? Do you never attract? Are you doomed to suffer in the solitude of singlehood for the rest of your days? Hmm. Huh. Well, that's okay, because there's another really good piece of common wisdom that's out there that says, great minds think alike and fools never differ. They kind of seem to contradict each other, don't they? You know, opposites attract, but great minds think alike. Huh. But that's okay, because as my grandmother used to say, common sense is not always common practice. That's a joke, you can laugh. <laughs> Thank you. Um, by the way, if you do miss a joke through my presentation, I'll let you know, and that is your cue to laugh. I have a very shallow sense of self, and I need you to give me constant reaffirmation. <laughs> So as she would say, common sense is not always common practice, and then she'd follow up with this little pearl of wisdom. And that's one of the reasons why God put me here. It's to remind everyone. <laughs> and one of the reasons God put me here was to talk to people about themselves. Now, today has been all about stories. And the TED Talk program is all about stories. Like so many other times and places in our human history where we have gathered together in space and place to have conversations that matter. And when I first saw the TED program, I was so excited and pumped. And I had said, one day, I want to be in one of those programs. I never had any idea or dream that I'd actually be on the stage. Be careful what you wish for, because you may just get it. And today, I'm here part of the TEDx community, and I am so thrilled to be here because my name is Brad, and I am a story changer. That is my superpower. I change my story. Now, I started changing my story approximately 30 years ago. I kid you not, when I was 10 years old, I remember making the distinct decision that I needed to find out who God was in order to find out who I was. I know, I was 10. I was an odd child. <laughs> and I didn't realize how odd I was as a child until I had my own child. And I realized that most other kids around their birthday don't sit down on the floor with crayons and pens and paper and reflect on their past year. <laughs> I would do this. I have very clear memories of me sitting down when I was like five or six and thinking, what happened the last year? Did I like it? What do I want in this year? Where do I want to go? And then what type of presents do I want to get there? As I said, I was an odd kid. So I was 10. And I decided that I needed to find out who somebody else was in order to find out who I was. And I have, over the last 30 years, logged in, and I actually calculated them last year because there's that 10,000 hour theory that if you devote a study to 10,000 hours, you become an expert. And I've actually clocked in 32,756 hours. So I am an awesome superhero at super changing my story. I know, right? And to give you an example, um, I was once in my past life, and I talk about my past life when I was asleep, when I was unaware. And in my past life, I was your typical type A personality. I was incredibly rigid. I was extremely judgmental and very, very harsh. I had three fingers pointing at the world and one finger pointing at me instead of the other way around. You know, my grandmother always used to say that. By the way, I'll talk about my grandmother a fair bit today. She was an amazing woman who sowed so many seeds into my life, and I am so incredibly grateful that she did that with me. She used to say, if you point your finger at somebody else, there's three pointing right back at you. So the chances are, if you have a reoccurring issue in your life, it's about you. <laughs> yeah. If you keep dating the same person over and over again, it's you, not them. So I've changed my story. I was once a born-again Christian missionary. I have been a telemarketer. I've been a model. 
I've been an actor. I have been a banker. I've been a social care worker. I've been an educator. And now I am studying sexology. I know. And where do you uh, study sexology? San Francisco, of course. <laughs> Spiritually, I'm now a Reformed Jew. And I have explored many different paths. How do you change your story? Well, first of all, you have to become self-aware. And this is one of the unique human traits. It is to be aware of ourselves. It's what psychologists and sociologists call that self-awareness trait. You know Rodin's, the thinker. Or the statement, I think, therefore I am. Or as Carrie Bradshaw would say, I shop, therefore I rock. <laughs> right? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Self-awareness leads us to that point of asking questions about who are we? What is our story? What do people say about ourselves? And what do we own as our truth? Do we have the belief in ourselves, or do we give away our power to everybody else to define us? My story is my story, and it is your story is your story. It's the idea that you can create your own reality. It's one of the bedrocks of the modern democratic state. The radical notion that the individual has the right to determine their own life, to determine what their story will be. So, with the construct of TEDx, what if? What if we are not just storytellers? but story changers. And what will your story be? Because it's not just enough to sit here and listen to amazing people and then go home and do your life the same way over and over again, right? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result each time. So I ask you, what if? What if you are a story changer? What will your story be? Now, of course, having spent 30 years of my life, I have discovered that there are certain steps I went through in story changing. My grandmother used to say, if you want to know how to do something, go to somebody who's already done it and talk to them. So that's what I do now, is I talk to people and organizations on how to change their story. And you might be asking yourselves, how do you change your story? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because if you didn't, it would be really awkward. I've got like, you know, six and a half minutes left. <laughs> there are three segments to story change, and I've put them into a rubric that is familiar to all stories everywhere. And of course, they are the classic beginning, middle, and end. But unlike traditional storytelling, story changing does not have chapters. Oh, no, 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 no. There are cycles. And like the cycles of grief and loss articulated by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, these are not linear. You can go through them back and forth, up and down. It's like a roller coaster on cocaine. It's up, down, everywhere, inside out. And if you jump off during the process, you will get hurt. <laughs> you can go through all of these cycles at any one point in any one time. However, for those who are linear in the group, I have put them into a structure so you can somewhat follow along. So the beginning section has a little graphic of a footstep. Because you know, a wise Buddhist teacher once said that the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. So I invite you to continue your journey because your journey brought you here today. My journey brought me here today. And our journeys will take us from this space and this place. And you need to decide what it is you're going to do with the information that you've been presented with today. So in the beginning, there are three cycles. And the first one is... Self-awareness piece. This is where you look at the stories that have come to you in your life. Where do they come from? Family, faith, friends, communities. Have you absorbed them? And what do they say about you? Are they appropriate for you in your life? Because just because a story worked once for us doesn't mean it always has to. When my daughter was five, it was inappropriate for her to cross the road on her own. But now she's 20, it would be inappropriate for me to demand that she holds my hand. Then you have to check in with yourself. In the immortal words of Dr. Phil, how's that working for you? 
are you getting the results that you want from your story? And that leads you into the next process. Because every question that we ask has three possible answers. And they are yes, no, and maybe. Sidebar, we in the West are culturalized not to like no and maybe. We love yes. Yes rocks our world. No kind of drives us crazy, maybe really wackadoodle stuff. Lots of other cultures in the world understand that there is wisdom in the no, in the N-O. There's wisdom in the maybe, and you need to harvest that because it leads you down the road less traveled. And that takes you into the middle aspect of the journey. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the truthiest of them all? Truthiest is a term I created <laughs> to describe individuals who believe they have cornered the market on truth. And a lot of us do. We've heard about dualistic thinking, or as I like to call it, our binary love affair. In the West, we have a huge love affair with the binary. Two rocks our world. You're male or you're female. You're heterosexual or you're homosexual. Okay, some people will even disagree with that, but they're not in the room right now, so that's all right. If you are watching while you stream, you can Twitter me later, we'll have an interesting conversation, it's all good. But, you know, you're tall or you're short, you're a fool or you're hungry, you're pretty or you're ugly, you're rich or you're poor, you're enemy or foe, you're in or you're out, you're up or you're down, you're a jock or a geek, you're dumb or you're smart. Two things rock our world. The wisdom of the indigenous cultures and many other cultures realize there are so many other things out there than just two. The binary, while it does have some power and wisdom, leads us to what I call blind spots or crosshairs. And those blind spots are things we can't see because we don't see them or we don't want to see them, like the Lancome lady from the Saturday Night Live sketch, la 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 la, la 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 la, la 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 la, you know, when we're presented with something we don't want to see or hear. Or we have crosshairs, the things that we focus in on and we pick on because one of those elements that is common in the human family is that we have three basic assumptions we operate our life under. The first assumption is we all basically do life the same way. Our second assumption is my way is the right way. And the third assumption is if you do something differently, you're doing it consciously to piss me off. <laughs> and so we have these crosshairs, we laser in on people. And as a result, we become entrenched. And this is where I said opposites do distract. We've talked about that dualistic thinking today, where I'm right, you're wrong, and I'm going to convince you because the world would be so much happier and easier if you all agreed with me. Because if I'm right, you must be wrong. And if you're right, oh, maybe I'm wrong. Crosshairs or blind spots. So don't worry about convincing others, convince yourself. Gandhi had said, be the change you wish to see in the world, not change others so that the world will agree with you. Eleanor Roosevelt had said, no one can humiliate you without your permission. And when I came out, I took that saying to heart. And in the last 17 years, I have not allowed a single person to oppress or humiliate me because of who I am. No one has that power any longer because I spent too much of my life giving my power away to everybody else without even thinking about it. So don't convince them, convince you. In other words, you be you and you be fine. You know, I got my little shirt here. I know, da na 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 na. When I was growing up in Australia, where men and men and sheep are nervous, but, huh? <laughs> I used to hear that term man up, cowboy up, grow up, step up. Well, you know what? I've given up with that. I say gray up. Move into the gray, people, because the gray is glorious. The gray is where compromise exists. The gray is where your wisdom is. The gray is where you will find yourself, and that is what we need to do. So I would invite you today to gray up. Go beyond growing up or stepping up or cowboy up or even give up. You're a story changer. What will your story be? And this brings us into our end segment, our end place.
You see, in life, we do get do-overs. So do it, do over, and do over more. And by the way, repeat the cycle as necessary. This is not a one lesson thing, people, because you're alive and life is meant to be this way. They talked about the illusion before about life being fair. My grandmother used to say that life is not fair. If life was fair, I wouldn't be rich and beautiful. If life were fair, there wouldn't be homeless people and we wouldn't have the homes and houses that we have. Life is never fair, but it is just. You get out what you put in if you change your beliefs and you change your perspectives. Sometimes you have to stop the power of the pause. We need to sometimes reflect and rest in order to recreate, and that's okay. Even now, in this moment, we can take a pause. You know, happily ever after, that's a fantasy. It's a fairy tale. I want to rewrite where we all live presently ever after. Because living in the present, that is totally doable. The present is a gift. It's the moment. It's all we have. The past is gone. The future may never arrive. That's why it's a gift. That's why we call it the present. So I would invite you to consider the possibility that right here, right now, you can rewrite. You are story changers. My name is Brad, and I'm a story changer. What if all of you joined me now? Stand up and rewrite. Thank you. Thank you.